Good evening. You're watching the main news on HKIBC. I'm Janice Lowe. Here's a look at tonight's top stories. The Democratic Party is fielding six candidates for the upcoming district council elections, ending months of speculation. Concern Group wants more subsidies for underprivileged children and rent controls for subdivided homes ahead of policy address. And the death toll in Gaza Strip from Israeli air raids climbed to over 2,300. The Democratic Party confirmed plans to contest the upcoming district council elections. Six current or former district councillors will now try to secure enough nominations before the end of the month. Macy Mock reports. After months of speculation, the Democratic Party confirmed that it will contest in the district council elections. Party chairman Lo Keen Hay will be among six current or former district councillors who will try to obtain nominations. Lo, a former councillor for Apple Chow, will run in Southern District. Likewise, Vice Chairwoman Bonnie Ng wants to run for the Central and Western District seats she vacated in 2021. Nelson Ip, Becky Lee and Ben Poon are also former councillors who resigned that year. The only exception is Liu Zhu, whose oath of allegiance was deemed valid and remains an incumbent councillor. The party will write to various members of the so-called three committees this week, hoping to win their endorsement. Lowe emphasized that the election hopefuls all fulfilled the definition of patriots. Mm said even though some of them had previously stepped down as district councillors, they continued to serve the public without reward. On the other hand, the city's biggest political party, DAB, said it will hold a meeting tomorrow to officially approve 100 or so aspirants for the district council race set for December the 10th. Around a quarter of them are first-time runners. Party chairman Gary Chan confirmed the DAB plans to contest in each of the 44 districts with some party members already holding seats in the three committees, which have nominating rights. Chen was asked if he had sought instructions from Beijing's liaison office on how to use the precious votes. The executive councillor only said the party will not obtain nominations from the three committees on behalf of candidates they support. However, the DAB has required members of the three committees to only nominate patriots, as well as those who are serious in serving the community. Lizzie Mock, HKIBC. The government said it could take six months for a hilly road connecting multiple housing estates in Xiaoke Wan to fully reopen. Part of Yuhing Road has been sealed off since early September after record rainfall triggered a massive landslide at nearby Mount Paka. In an interview with Ming Pao, Zhou Technical Engineering Office head Raymond Chang explained that pieces of weathered granite rocks were washed down from the natural terrain above. But he insisted an artificial retaining wall on the ground, on the ground level remained intact. The works, covering an area of 3,000 square meters, involved water draining strategies and stabilization of the slope. A review of the city's natural terrain is also underway, and prevention measures will be imposed if needed. A concerned group is making last-ditch calls to improve welfare and benefits for grassroots residents ahead of the policy address next week. The Society for Community Organization wants more grant and subsidies for school children, as well as rent controls for subdivided flats. Janice Yu reports. With 220,000 children living below the poverty line, the Society for Community Organization says that 60% of them were unable to participate in any extracurricular activities over summer. Announcing the results of a survey, the group said that while their classmates enrolled in music or arts lessons, they could only watch on as their parents were unable to afford the tuition fees. <laughs> Ahead of the policy address later this month, 
Soko urged the government to increase the student grant and subsidies so even underprivileged children can explore their interests and unleash their potential. A charity concert with young music talents will be held next month to showcase their gifts. In another briefing, the organization noted that the rents of subdivided flats have shot up in recent months. Rental prices of tiny units have skyrocketed from $38.50 per square foot in January to $40 in August. SoCo is once again calling for rent controls for subdivided flats, as well as extending the occupancy period of transitional homes as they wait to be allocated a public housing unit. Janice Yu, HKIBC. A COVID quarantine camp in Yunlong, which has been left vacant since last year, has been given a new lease of life. Authorities have now converted the facility into a dormitory for foreign construction workers who are set to arrive in the near future. Located at Tenmei, east of Maipo, the 1,800 container rooms can provide accommodation for around 7,000 workers. The sprawling site also features communal facilities such as bathrooms, pantries and activity rooms. Contractors importing the workers will have to arrange transport for the workers to and from the construction site. They are required to set off before the morning peak to avoid worsening traffic congestion in the area. Customs have detected a drug concealment case using a wheelchair, the first of its kind this year, and arrested a foreign national. The 51-year-old man arrived from St. Martin via Paris. Officers raised suspicion after X-ray scans discovered the wheelchair's cushion and back were resewn. Hidden inside the chair's linings were 11 kilograms of suspected cocaine with a street value of $12 million. The traveler has been detained for drug trafficking. Turning overseas, a full-scale ground attack against Gaza seems to be imminent, as Israeli troops and tanks gather near the border. While civilians are told to flee to the south, many were unable to escape air raids, which have killed at least 2,300 Palestinians in Gaza and wounded over 9,700. Raymond Young reports. Israel has told civilians to evacuate from northern Gaza ahead of a ground offensive. But that doesn't mean airstrikes in the south would be halted. In the densely populated area of Khan units, people were busy rescuing those trapped underneath the rubble, following rocket attacks which toppled buildings. <laughs> the scenes were even more dismal at hospitals. It seemed the medical staff were fighting a losing battle as residents injured from Israeli bombing attacks kept streaming in. Many of them were children or even infants suffering cuts, concussion or broken limbs. Israel initially gave 1.1 million residents 24 hours to flee northern Gaza, but the warning remains active as of this morning local time. Local aid workers pointed out, however, that leaving is difficult due to crowded roads and lack of transport. Many also desperately needed food and water, as relief agencies warned their supplies would run out in days under Israel's total blockade. But the Israeli Defense Forces are pointing the finger at Hamas. They claim the Palestinian group is preventing civilians from evacuating to the south by blocking a corridor with trucks. A video purportedly showing an explosion at a designated escape route also triggered intense debate. Israel claims the blast was caused by a bomb planted by Hamas as part of the group's plan to use civilians as human shields but some analysts suggested the possibility of an Israeli precision airstrike. Even as Israel vowed to eradicate them, Hamas fighters remained defiant and countered with mortar strikes. But an air, land and sea offensive against Gaza seemed imminent. Footage released by the Israeli army showed Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu visiting frontline troops. 
מוכנים כולם. סעודיה ארביה is emerging as a potential key player for peace talks in the conflict between Israel and Hamas. Both China and the United States have engaged in talks with the Saudi foreign minister in hopes of seeking a ceasefire. The priority now needs to, to be to stop further civilian suffering. And here we need to find a way to quickly de-escalate the situation, to quickly bring uh, back uh, peace, uh, at least uh, stopping the guns, and then uh, uh, working towards addressing also the humanitarian challenges. And here I have to emphasize that the humanitarian situation in Gaza is very, very difficult, and we need to work together to make sure that access for humanitarian uh, uh, relief and humanitarian goods is allowed. I think um, at the same time it's uh, vitally important, and I know that our countries agree, uh, that we uh, work together to make sure that, to the best of our ability, this conflict does not spread. Uh, to other places uh, on other fronts, and so I look forward to discussing that. Meanwhile, Foreign Minister Wang Yi said that Israel's actions in Gaza have gone beyond the scope of self-defense. The comments were part of a readout published following a phone call between Wang and Faisal bin Farhan. Chinese envoy Jai Jun will visit the Middle East next week to push for a ceasefire in the conflict and promote peace talks. Meanwhile, rallies calling for an end to the bloodshed are continuing around the world. Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Free, free Palestine! Thousands turned up on the streets of Sydney to show solidarity for Palestinians who were killed or injured. This is despite police earlier rejecting an application by the organizer to stage a rally over fears that it will lead to violence. Many said they had to lend a voice to the Palestinians after feeling the media are not objectively portraying the events on both sides. There were similar demonstrations in the Chilean capital, Santiago, as people called for the end of the conflict between Israel and Hamas. Swimming sensation Shafan Hahi has set another record at the Swimming World Cup in Athens. The freestyle specialist is also challenging herself in another discipline tonight. The second leg of the World Aquatic Swimming World Cup was staged in the birthplace of the first modern Olympics, Athens. Although Hong Kong's favorite Shafan Hahi backed two golds and a bronze in Berlin last week, she needed more points to be crowned the women's champion. Positioned in lane 5, Hahi was neck and neck with 20-year-old American Tori Husk in lane 1 in the 200 meters freestyle final before the first turn. But Hahi was soon in the lead and further extended it by a body's length towards the halfway mark. She maintained her dominance throughout the race and touched the wall first in 1 minute and 55.03 seconds. That was an improvement of seven hundredths of a second from the tournament record she only set last week. Instead of sticking to her favorite discipline of freestyle, Hohi decided to also contest in the breaststroke. Because I've been racing so much, I just want to switch it up a bit, so yeah. I have the 50 breast tomorrow, should be a fun event. Fatigue management could be key, as Hahi will be taking part in two competitions in close succession tonight, the 50 meters breaststroke and the 100 meters freestyle. Current women's leader Kaylee McKeon also broke the tournament record in the 100 meters backstroke. Positioned in lane 4, the 22-year-old Australian was only competing against herself in the race. She was ahead of Canada's Kylie Maas in lane 5 by almost two bodies length on her way to the finish line. McKeon set a new tournament record of 57.63 seconds, just 0.18 seconds short of her own world record. In the women's 50 meters butterfly, all eyes were on Sweden's Sarah Sjöström in lane 5 and China's Zhang Yufei in lane 4. It was a nip and tuck race for the pair last week, and things were no different this time round. But as much as Zhang wanted to top the podium, 
she once again had to settle for silver. Shashram was 0.34 seconds quicker than Zhang, coming back first in 24.97 seconds, also a new tournament record. On to the weather now. Cloudy with sunny intervals and light rain patches tomorrow. Temperatures will range between 25 and 29 degrees. Expect wet and windy conditions from midweek. That's our main news for Sunday night. Join us for more news at 11. I'm Janice Lowe. Thanks for watching. Good night.